This is ProBlogger. G'day there, my name is Darren Rouse and I'm the blogger behind problogger.com. A blog, podcast, event, job board and a series of ebooks all designed to help you as a blogger to grow an amazing blog, uh, to create great content that's going to change the life of your readers and to build profit around that blog too. You can learn more about ProBlogger and our upcoming events over at problogger.com. Now, in today's episode, uh, episode number 203, I want to share some teaching on how to approach influencers and other well-known people in your niche or even outside your niche too. Um, Some of what I'm going to share today actually works really well on a personal level if you admire a comedian or um, a musician or that type of person as well. Um, One of the most powerful ways to grow your profile, um, your audience and brand is to connect with others in your niche, particularly those who are prominent themselves. Um, The benefits of doing this can be many and varied. The opportunities that can flow from these interactions can be pretty cool for the growth of your blog. But doing it the wrong way can also hurt your blog and brand as well. So today I want to share some uh, things to do, the approach that I take with approaching influencers, but also some things not to do. You can find today's show notes over at problogger.com forward slash podcast forward slash 203, where I will share some further reading as well. There'll also be links on the show notes to our Facebook group, which you can find at problogger.com forward slash group, a thriving group and community of bloggers. We've got some new things going in uh, there at the moment, which I'll tell you about at the end of the podcast today. And also you'll find on our show notes today, the last chance to get tickets for for our Aussie events, which are happening in the next few days in Brisbane and Melbourne. You can find more details on those Australian events at problogger.com forward slash events and our Dallas event in Dallas, Texas later in the year in October at problogger.com forward slash success. And now let's talk about approaching influences in your niche. Creating great content, finding an audience, Building engagement. Monetizing your blog. This is Pro Blogger. So today we're talking about how to connect with influencers in your niche. And today's podcast really comes about after... Uh, Earlier in the week, I listened to a Facebook Live talk by someone else. I'm not going to mention who they are because I'm going to critique what they say. Um, And this person was talking about um, this very topic, how to leverage influencers to grow your blog. Now, the topic is a good one. Um, As I said at the top of the show, I think that getting to know other people in your niche can bring many benefits to your blog. And it's not just about growing traffic and them sending you traffic. It's also um, about growing your profile, growing your credibility, making friends um, and helping them as well. It's a mutual thing in my mind. But after 15 minutes of listening to this Facebook Live, I found myself getting very frustrated. And the reason for this was that the person described a system, a systematized approach that was incredibly formulaic and it was anything but personal. They actually used a tool to run all of their approaches. And the tool I'm not going to uh, name um, because I really don't believe in this approach, but the tool itself allowed you to create a sequence of emails that is going to be sent to influencers to get their attention. The emails were all set up ahead of time, and depending upon whether the influencer responded to you, it would then send them more emails at different intervals. You can set them up for every 24 hours or every 48 hours. Uh, For example, the first email might be a friendly introductory uh, email where you mention that you're a fan of their site. And if they don't respond to that, a second email might be, you know, you might have missed my last email. And then the third one might be something funny, but a little bit more direct about why you were ignoring my emails. And then the fourth one could be a more direct one, perhaps even strongly worded that you're disappointed that they, they didn't respond. And the person who was teaching this system actually had these templates. And as I went through them, I recognized the emails because I get these emails every day. Um, If the influencer responds at any point, then you can have other emails in the system that you go back, these canned responses, asking them to do whatever it is that you're trying to get them to do. Or you can take over and get a little bit more personal with your responses at that point. And 
As I listened to this presentation, on some levels it made sense. I could see how it might work in some cases, but what annoyed me most about it was that this person said that once you've got these emails set up that you can then scale it and then you can put in uh, 10 or 20 or 100 influencers' names and email addresses and then send out this system or um, get this system going with hundreds of people at once. Um, all you have to do is add in their first name and their site's URL and their email address and it will just take over and it will run this system for you. As he described this, it made me remember all of the emails that I've received that have been this same templated formulaic response. The, the person doing the Facebook Live said, if you buy, buy this product, and it was hundreds of dollars to get this, and it was uh, a monthly product as well, they also include all the email addresses of the influence as well, which annoyed me uh, even more because I know I'm on some of those lists. So I was pretty no annoyed with this presentation. And I guess the main reason that I was annoyed is that I get these emails every day, and I can spot them a mile off. And whilst I didn't know the name of the tool, I, um, I, I could see what was going on. It might be that you, these emails are slightly personalized. You know, they usually have my name. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they say insert name here and you can see that they've forgotten to insert the name. They might have my site's URL, but they're obviously not personal. Uh, and when they come at uh, predetermined intervals, every 48 hours in a sequence, I simply trash them and mark them as spam. And I don't like to do that because I like to reply to emails that I get and I do as much as I can. But it begins to clutter the inbox. And I get, you know, 10 or so of these every day and it wastes a lot of my time. Um, but here's the thing though. I know that the bulk of people who are sending those emails and buying these very expensive tools have good intentions. And I know some people listening to this podcast have probably used them as well. They're being sold these tools, which can be very expensive and promised amazing results. But without knowing it, I know these good people who are using these tools are potentially hurting their brand. And here's what I want to say today is that there are better ways to do it. You know, I talk to big influencers. I'm a, I'm a small fry, but I talk to big influencers. And what I experience, what I experience personally is just the tip of the iceberg. I spoke to one big influencer last week. He actually asked me not to mention his name, but he told me that he gets over 100 emails every day that are the same formulaic approaches. And many times he looks at the emails and he can see that people haven't even bothered to customize the emails. They're exactly the same from multiple people. So they're, they're using these swipe files. And it was interesting to chat with him because whilst he was really angry about getting all of these emails and wasting so much time, on, on the other hand, he said, it's actually not that hard to get on my radar. He's actually someone who is very easy to get in touch with someone who has collaborated with people many times over who have approached him the right way. But people who go this new automated route never, ever succeed with him. He just trashes them. He marks their emails as spam. And it really doesn't build their brand at all to approach him in this way. Now, I actually asked this uh, influencer if I could interview him for this particular podcast, and he, he was a bit hesitant to do that because he didn't want to trigger hate amongst the people who were using those tools, and he also didn't want to trigger a flood of people trying to approach him uh, because he's a very busy guy. So he did give me some advice, and I've kind of compiled it into today's um, topic and added some of my own thoughts as well. And I really do genuinely hope that these help you uh, for those of you who are trying to reach out to influencers. You're listening to Pro Blogger. Okay, so let me go through some of these tips. The first one is to have realistic expectations. You know, let me start by saying that whether you use the automation route uh, or whether you take the approach that I'm going to talk about today, not all influencers are going to respond to you. They get a lot of approaches and they have a lot of interactions every day. The person I am actually talking about, this anonymous influencer that I'm basing today's podcast on, he has over a million social media connections. In, in fact, it's several million when you add all the networks together. And he gets a ton of approaches every day. 
day. Not only the automated one, but other ones as well. And he does actually interact at a remarkable level. I just looked at his Twitter account and he replied to over 100 people today in the last 24 hours on Twitter. So he's interacted a lot there. He also did a one hour Q&A session on Facebook Live today. So he, he does a lot of interacting, but even at that level of interaction, he tells me that he's aware he can't get back to everyone and he feels bad about it. Now, not all influencers come anywhere near what this uh, influencer does. They're busy people. They get approached all day, every day. So don't be surprised if you either hear nothing back or you might get a response back that isn't what you hope for. Uh, They may be shutting you down in some way or, or saying no to you, or maybe you get something back from an assistant and not them personally. But don't let this stop you. Um, You never know who you can interact with. Um, So make the approach and try to build a relationship with these influencers, but know that not all of them are capable. They just don't have enough hours in the day in many cases. Don't let um, it stop you making the approach, but also go in with realistic ex. Expectations. You know, as I said at the top of the show, I've actually had some amazing interactions over the years with people that I never thought would respond to me. You know, people in my niches who are much bigger than me, um, movie stars, A list singers, comedians, um, business people, really a variety of different people who I thought would probably ignore my approach, but who did get back to me. It's amazing how approachable people are. It's amazing how interactive some people are, but go into it with realistic expectations expectations and knowing it may not work the way that you expected it. So that's my number one tip. Be realistic. Number two, don't stalk. (laughs) Don't be a stalker. All of what I'm going to share with you today is about being useful. It's about helping influencers. It's about reaching out and helping to um, give them a win. It's about helping them to achieve what they want to achieve. Um, But if you're not careful, some of what I'm going to share today can look a little bit like stalking. So Yes, be enthusiastic, reach out, but be aware of not overstepping boundaries. Um, If you don't know where those boundaries are, uh, maybe have an accountability buddy that you share what you're doing with and bounce your ideas around so that they can maybe say to you, hey, that's starting to look a bit stalkerish. So just be aware that when you are reaching out, you know, people are willing to interact with you, but don't overstep the boundaries. And I'll touch on that a few times during today's episode. Okay, number three tip is to be someone worth knowing, um, which sounds a little bit odd, but you know, when you reach out to someone, the chances are that before they respond, particularly if you're asking them something, um, uh, asking them to do something or um, approaching them in a personal way, many times before they reply to you, they will do a bit of digging and they will check out who you are. They'll do some research. They might check out your blog. They might look on your social media accounts. They're going to want to know who this person is that's making an approach. And I guess the question I want to ask is, what are they going to find? You know, perhaps the best thing you can do before you start reaching out to people is to build something worth being found. Show that you're a genuine person, that you're a credible person, person, that you're a trustworthy person, that you have expertise perhaps, or that other people like you build some social proof. I know this is hard if you're just starting out. You can't just conjure this stuff up. But if um, uh, the more that you can show that you're a worthwhile person, that you're worth being known in some way, um, the more likely they are to respond in a positive way. Um, This takes time to build, of course, but um, even if it's your Twitter account, you know, is your Twitter account look good? You know, when they look at your Twitter account, are they going to see you complaining all the time about things? Are they going to see you um, talking about uh, the topic that they are interested in? So you can think about, you know, what are they going to think when they dig a little bit deeper? So work hard at creating a great blog or a great podcast, a great Twitter account, a great whatever it is that you do so that when they do a little bit of digging, they will be um, interested. They'll be intrigued. They will um, see you as a a potentially a credible source of information and and worth being known. So this is all before you even make the approach. This is something just to keep working on, I guess. Okay, number four tip is to know them before you know them. And that is to do a little bit of research, to do a little bit of preparation. 
You know, most of what I'm going to share today can be uh, helped a lot by doing a little bit of work before you make the approach, trying to understand who the person is, trying to understand what their goals are, what their motives are, knowing a little bit about their history. What is their story? What are their values? What do they like? What do they dislike? Um, All these things, knowing all of these things will help you to create a better impression and to serve them better. It will inform the approach that you take. So do a little bit of digging. Look at their social media accounts. Read their blog if they've got one. Listen to their podcast. Try to understand who they are underneath the fact that they're an influencer. And again, this is one of those areas you don't want to be stalking them. You don't want to be, you know, trying to hack into their Facebook account or, um, you know, getting too personal. Um, but having an understanding of who they are is going to go a long way. Um, and the other thing that's a part of this is to um, do a little bit of research into where they engage most. This is really important. They might have a Twitter account, but do they engage on their Twitter account or are they using it more to broadcast? They may actually prefer to do their engaging on LinkedIn, or they may prefer to do their engagement in a Facebook group, or they may prefer to do it via Facebook Live. Um, Really, most influencers have a variety of social media accounts, but if you go and do some analysis, you'll find that they have a preferred place that they like to interact. And sometimes they communicate this. Sometimes if you look at their contact page on their blog, they might say, hey, I hang out in this Facebook group a lot. Come and ask me questions there. Sometimes you need to do a little bit more digging as well. I'm a good example of this. I have a lot of social media accounts. I don't use Instagram very much at all. Um, I do have the account there. When I go on holidays, I tend to post more there, but I don't tend to interact much there. I've got a Twitter account where I interact a little bit more, but for me, Facebook's where I interact more, in our Facebook group, um, on Facebook Lives that I do at certain times of the week as well. So if you were to dig into me, you would find that Facebook's probably a better place to begin to build those relationships. And I'm trying to communicate that more and more as well to help people to find me where I'm most accessible. So do a bit of research into who the person is. Creating great content and building your audience. This is ProBlogger. Okay. Once you've done that research, one of the key things that you should be thinking about is what what are the goals of this influencer and how can I serve them? I guess the fifth thing that I want to say is to serve. Um, Serve first ask later (laughs) would be the tip that I give you. In your research, um, what are they trying to achieve? What are their goals? What are their passions? What are the outcomes that they are looking for? Now, most influencers, it's fairly obvious what they're trying to achieve. They might be an author. They're probably trying to sell more books. They may be a podcaster. They're probably trying to get more listeners to their podcast. So begin to think about, you know, what is it that they want? What is a win for them? And how can I give them a win in some way? Now, some of the wins that online influencers are wanting are going to be pretty obvious. You know, for example, if they're a blogger, most of them are going to want to increase their reach. They're going to want either more traffic or a bigger audience or a bigger profile. And that's something that most online influencers are going to want. And that doesn't come and go. It's just something that they all typically want. Most online influencers want engagement. Most online influencers want some kind of conversion, uh, some sort of monetization. They're trying to sell something, whether it's a a product or a service or um, getting people to a website where they convert by getting people to look at their ads. Um, Most Online influencers are also trying to create content. So these are things that influencers are interested in. I guess the question is, how can you serve them? How can you help them to achieve those goals? And I'm going to dig into those uh, things in a moment. But there are also other times in an influencer's life where they will want something specific, that something that's a little bit more time sensitive, um, and that they may be looking for a particular outcome over the next week or over the next month. And these are really key things to latch into and to understand. Um, So uh, are they launching a new book? 
Are they launching a new product or a new service? Are they supporting a not-for-profit project that they're passionate about? Are they launching a new social media account or exploring a new medium that they're trying to get more traction on? Maybe they're launching a YouTube account or they've just started doing Facebook Lives. When influencers are starting new things or they're promoting something specific, two things happen. One, they get really busy. Um, But two, they often become very open to being approached if you can help them with that particular thing. So if you notice an influencer doing um, something time specific, this can at times be a great time to approach them. They may be more open to engaging in some way uh, if you're in a position to help them with an outcome that they're looking for. So be aware of their ongoing wins that they're looking, the outcomes that they're looking for but also be really aware of those key times when they're um, about to launch something. And often they'll tell you when it's coming. You know, I was looking at one online influencer the other day and he said he's got a new course coming out next month. That's a signal that maybe I should be reaching out to him and saying, hey, I noticed you've got this launch coming up. Can I interact with you? Can I support you in that in some way? Um, Be aware of those type of things. Okay, what I want to do now is just look at look at some of those objectives um, that an influencer might have, and uh, some of them are more the ongoing ones, um, and, and hopefully this will give you a few more tangible, tactical things that you can do. Um, although I hesitate to use that word tactical, because I really do want this to be about relationship. Don't systematize it. Don't, don't see this as a tactic. Actually, be a good human being and build a relationship with them in some ways, because ultimately that's going to give you you and the other person the biggest win, and it's going to be a lot more fun and satisfying along the way as well. Okay, so what are some of the objectives that an influencer might have that you could help with? Um, The first one might be that they are looking for engagement. They, they might want more engagement in some way. Um, the influencer might be a blogger. They might be a podcaster. They might be a video blogger doing a live video. In all of these cases, one of the things they want is people to engage with what they do. It's just not satisfying as a blogger or a, a live video to do create great content and to have no one interact with it in any way. So one of the simplest things that you can do is to comment and leave comments, leave replies on their blog posts, reply to their social media. Don't just say, that was good, nice post. Go the extra mile by being um, constructive, by adding something to what they're doing. Uh, If they ask questions, answer the questions. If they're um, teaching something, give some examples of their teaching. Um, uh, Ask questions uh, of them. Um, one of the things I think can really get on people's attention is when you go above and beyond with the comments that you leave. And this is, I can think back a number of times over the last year where people have gone above and beyond leaving comments on my blog, on my Facebook, uh, in the Facebook group, um, actually showing that they are not just reading and and saying nice posts, but that they're actually interested in engaging in some way. That's one of the most satisfying things for a blogger, a podcaster, or or someone on social media. So be highly engaged um, and add to the conversation in some way. That's great. So being a highly engaged audience member is great, but you can actually take this further when it comes to um, this idea of helping someone to build engagement. You can actually help them to build community as well. And one of the things I've noticed is um, that um, there's real opportunity to join in and help influencers become a build this community around what they're doing. So let me give you a really good example of this. I noticed um, this is about six or seven years ago. I noticed a blogger was running a Twitter chat. And uh, it was a Twitter chat that was fairly well attended in their particular niche. And I decided to join in on that Twitter uh, chat. Now, this blogger had never run a Twitter chat before. And so I decided to make uh, myself an unofficial community manager for this Twitter chat. Um, And now I didn't tell the blogger I was doing it. And I I didn't want to be too over the top with it. And so I kind of um, restrained myself a little bit. Um, But I decided I was going to ask some good questions. And I was going to respond to as many people people as I could in that Twitter chat. My goal was not to build my profile. My goal was to make it the best Twitter chat uh, that could possibly be. And at the end of the Twitter chat, the um, other blogger messaged me privately and said, hey, 
that was amazing. Uh, could you come back next week to do it as well? Now, they didn't actually know me from ProBlogger. They didn't know my profile whatsoever. Um, I, it was actually completely off topic and random that I was on this tr- particular Twitter chat, but I had participated in Twitter chats before. I knew what made a good Twitter chat, and so I decided just to be the best participant in that community that I could. And by me doing that, it actually drew others into the conversation, and, and that, they actually really valued that. So, if someone's doing a Facebook Live, don't just leave comments answering their questions or asking them questions. Take notice of the other people on the chat and respond to their questions. Say, yeah, that's a good idea, not just to the person doing the Facebook Live, but to other people who are commenting as well. Ask them questions, try and engage them, welcome them into the in, into uh, the community. Now, you want to be a little bit careful here. There is a You can go too far with this, and this is, is where you can be seen to be almost trying to take take over someone else's community. You want to be very careful there. Don't stalk them. Don't come across in a way that you're just trying to build your own profile. Um, You want to be really careful that you are being seen as someone who is serving that community in some way. Another thing that could work at this um, this kind of juncture is to actually volunteer in some way. And it may be after you've um, done some of this type of thing and tried to build engagement, you might want to reach out to the influencers and say, hey, um, I've really enjoyed your Facebook lives. Would it be helpful if someone was to assist you in them in some way? And I'm happy to volunteer my time. Or maybe it's a Twitter chat. Um, you know, I'm happy to participate in that. Could I prepare some questions for you? Can I serve you in any way to help? you to make that Twitter chat run better. So it may be that it's better to participate and then volunteer to take on those type of roles as well. Another um, role that you might want to volunteer to participate in is to um, moderate in a Facebook group as well. Although you probably want to be um, a a good active member of of the community before you'd make that that kind of volunteering um, offer. How to build and monetize your blog. This is ProBlogger. So help someone to build engagement, I guess, is the first thing that is going to help them to have a win. Um, Another thing that many influencers are trying to do is to build traffic and reach, to build their profile. This is a goal that most online influencers want to achieve. So how can you help them to do that? Um, You may not have a massive audience yourself. You may not think that you're going to be able to send them any traffic, but even you attempting to help them can be a powerful thing, something that's going to get on their radar. So a few practical things that you can do to help them to grow their audience, share their stuff, share their content, retweet their tweets um, if you think it's going to be relevant to your audience, um, take their blog posts and share them on your social media, link to them from your blog. You may even want to reach out to them um, and ask, can I interview you on my blog to um, you know, introduce you to my audience? Sometimes that may not be possible. They might not be willing to invest the time into an interview, but even just sending them a simple question that you um, get their opinion on, a one-question interview, hey, uh, could you answer this question? I want to use it in my blog. Those type of things expose your audience to this, this particular information influencer and help them to grow their profile. Um, If they're not interested in that type of interview type thing, maybe just do a case study on them. Maybe um, you can find enough information on what they've done and what they've achieved in the past that you could write a case study on who they are, how they've grown their business, how they've grown their influence. Um, You might find a quote and use one of their quotes in your articles. Um, Link to them from other places. Um, Maybe you write guest posts for other blogs. Don't just link in your guest posts to your own content, link to other influencers. This happened to me um, a few years ago now, so, uh, uh, a blogger that I'd never heard of before wrote a post in um, a big business publication. It was a guest post. It wasn't something they were paid for. And that that link in their um, article, I think it was from Business Week or, or Forbes, one of those, that sent a ton of traffic across to my site. Now, this blogger could never have sent me that much traffic. But by getting an article in a bigger publication and linking to me from that, they certainly got on my radar. 
So are you writing guest posts? Don't just promote yourself, promote other people. See that as an opportunity to um, help someone else achieve their goals as well. Maybe you're giving a talk, a presentation. Um, mention these influences in, in those talks as well. It's amazing how many times people will tweet the influencer that you're talking about in a talk on those occasions. It may be that you can introduce that influencer to someone else that they need to meet that that might help them. So be a connector. Um, Perhaps you can't send them traffic directly, but perhaps you could suggest to another blogger that they link to something that this person has written. So actually be the connector. Um, Help to set them up in, in some way. Maybe you could recommend that someone in mainstream media interview them. I I remember years ago now, a reader of Digital Photography School, when I was just starting out that blog, they got me an interview in the New York Times. Um, Just as I was starting my blog, this reader thought I was doing something interesting. And so they sent a random email to a reporter at the New York Times. And that reporter emailed me and asked me to interview me. Um, So maybe you could be that type of person to help them to grow in some way. So help them to build their audience. And when you do these types of things, let them know what you're doing. You don't need to boast about it, but if, if you've linked to them in your blog, if you've linked them to them in a guest post, um, just send them an email or send them a message saying, hey, I mentioned you here. That is enough. That will get on their radar. Send them a, a quick message, those type of things. It's the accumulation of all these little things that you can be doing that actually has a big impact. Um, If the influencer is trying to sell something, um, how can you help them to sell more of that thing? Um, Maybe you could become an affiliate. Maybe you could write a review of their products and services. Maybe you could recommend their product on social media. But here's one of the cool things that you can do. Um, Send them a testimonial. You know, people who are selling stuff, they love getting testimonials that they can use. So if um, if someone's selling an ebook, buy the ebook and send them a paragraph of, of what you think about that ebook that they could then use. Uh, you may even want to send a photo, but here's even cooler, send them a video. Send them a video testimonial. Um, Send them an audio testimonial if they've got a podcast. These type of things are going to help them to sell more of their thing. So again, it's all about trying to work out what is it that they're trying to achieve and how can you be useful in that? Another last thing that you can do, many influencers are trying to create content. You can participate in the content creation process. It may be that you have an idea for a blog post that they could write, something that they've never written about before, but a question. And you may even go to the effort of putting a title and three points that they could cover into it. Actually help them to create that blog post. Maybe it's about asking them questions that they might want to write about. Maybe you could actually create some content for them as well. And maybe you could create a little jingle for their podcast. Um, Maybe you could create a a meme that they could share on social media. Maybe you could create a a social graphic that they could share that promotes one of their posts. Um, Create some little pieces of content that they can share. It may not be much, but even just little things that can um, uh, be useful to them, little graphics that they can use on their Twitter account, for example, Uh, things that they can um, uh, use in their own content to improve their content is actually going to make a big impression. Maybe it's doing research for them into a particular topic. Maybe it's um, finding some data um, that they might find useful. Maybe it's even letting them know if there's an error in their content, you know, a spelling mistake or or, um, something that's not quite working or a broken link. Now, you need to be a bit careful about those ones. You want to probably do it in private if you can, not call them out um, and be polite and be kind in the way that you critique those type of things. But those are the type of things that help them to create better content and that makes an impression upon people. You're listening to Pro Blogger. Okay, a few more tips. Um, And this is a big one. This has probably already come through a few times in what I've said is, but is to be human. Um, Whilst I am calling these influencers influencers, they're not really influencers. They're human beings. Um, They have good days. They have bad days. They get hurt. They get angry. They feel joy. They have questions and problems of their own as well as questions and solutions that they give other people. So... Answer their questions. 
You know, if they are tweeting that they've got a question or they've got a problem, research the solution to that problem. Actually serve them in that way. Um, Support the causes and passions that they have. Encourage them when you notice they're going through a tough time. If they're tweeting about a problem they've got, send them a word of encouragement. Celebrate their wins. Notice their efforts. Notice the things that they're trying to do. Notice their strengths. Laugh with them. And one of the best things you can do is, you know, people often blow off steam on Twitter. Um, They might mention that they're watching Game of Thrones, you know, the the season opener of that. Some lighthearted banter, a well-timed pun, sharing a funny gif or a meme can go a long way, even if it's completely off topic. If, If they've shown part of themselves to be human, show part of yourself to be human as well. Maybe even send them a gift. You want to be a bit careful about gifts. <laughs> you don't want to um, do anything too creepy there, but you know, um, a meaningful gift, something physical that you can send them in the post, it can actually go a long way as well. I did this a few years ago. I noticed a, a movie star. I'm not going to mention who it is because um, I don't want a big note, um, uh, but this particular movie star was starting a blog. And uh, this was like 10 years ago now. And I decided to send this movie star um, my book in the post. Um, and I, I didn't really do it with the agenda that they would link to, the, to it or anything, and they didn't. But I got this really nice email back saying, hey, thanks. Um, I, no one else really noticed. I started my blog. It didn't really work. But I appreciate you, you um, reaching out in that way. So those type of things can really um, create a big impression. So be human. Another thing to, to try is to um, be memorable, where you can. Now, this is really hard. It's not always possible to do, but if you can do something out of the blue, something surprising or something funny or something really smart or something really generous, that can actually create a memory that can be a very powerful thing. It may also be part of your brand. It can help you to stand out. For example, I know one blogger whose brand is that he always wears bright colored eyeglasses. He has he must have 50 pairs of them and it, almost every day he wears a different um, pair of glasses and it's part of his brand. It's the type of thing that people remember. He's the guy that... Um, so, again, it's it's not something you can just do, but if you can build something memorable into the approaches that you make, that can really go a long way to help you not only to create a first impression, but to create a first impression that lasts in some way. Um, maybe it's um, the way you uh, use your sense of humor. I also know, uh, and this is another one to be a bit careful about, but I know one blogger who's very good at giving constructive criticism. And he gets on really big influencers' radars by doing something that feels really risky. He points out things that they could improve upon. Um, But he does it in such a way that the person actually feels really good about it. So he might find a mistake in something that they've written or an improvement that they could make to some content that they made or to a product. He points out one of their weaknesses, but he has this way of doing it that the person actually feels like he's being very constructive, very generous, and very helpful. Um, So if you want to take that approach, it feels risky to do it, but it can actually create a massive impression. I've seen this happen to me a number of times. One example that comes to mind is um, when I started this podcast, a few weeks after launching this podcast, I got an email from one of our event attendees, uh, our Aussie Pro Blogger event an attendee called Rachel Corbett. Now, Rachel has experience in radio and television, and so she's someone who I knew about. We'd not really spoken a great deal, but she sent me an email on this day, a few weeks after my podcast launched, and she had recorded me a personal podcast. She actually, it was like 20 or 30 minutes of advice, of ways that I could improve my podcast. She pointed out the things that I wasn't so good at and things that I wasn't doing in a good way. And Now, she's actually a radio person, so I knew she had some credibility uh, there. And and one of the reasons I probably did persist with all 20 minutes of that recording was that I knew she was going to give good advice. But I could also tell through her recording that she genuinely wanted to help. And she wasn't just being critical, she was being constructively critical. And that really came across in the way she said it. So if you do it, uh, if you want to stand out and be memorable by um, pointing out um, uh, criticism, uh, do it with grace, be constructive, show you care, and do it in private where you you can as well. Be uh, genuine with your criticism. 
Um, and this example really leads me to um, my next point is to personalize your approach. In this world where influencers are being bombarded by automated personality-less approaches, make your communications as personal as you can. You know, Rachel sending me a 20-minute personal podcast that no one else would ever listen to, for her going to that length to send me a message, um, no one's ever done that for me before. 20 minutes may have been too long if I hadn't known who she was in the past and we'd not interacted before, um, but the medium she chose was really smart. So record an audio um, you know, that allows the person to hear your voice to understand you are genuine, to hear some of your personality, and to be reminded that it's a human being on the other side of the approach and not just some words on a screen. Um, Sending audio is so easy to do. You know, Facebook Messenger now allows it. Um, You can record it on your computer and send it in an email. There's so many ways to send audio. Another option is to record video. I'm seeing this more and more lately. People sitting in front of a webcam or a phone um, or even doing a screencast and sending that video. Shows that you've gone to some effort and um, and and that you're a person as well. Um, and then lastly, I guess, with personal approaches is where possible, meeting the person in person can create a really positive impression too. Um, just don't stalk. Here's my advice again, don't stalk. Um, and also be aware that if you're approaching someone at a conference, it may not be the best time for them to remember you because they're probably being approached by a lot of people. Um, if they're a speaker at a conference, often they're being bombarded by people asking questions. So yes, meet them, but follow up with another message, whether it be, you know, text or video or a message on social media in some way. A few last tips, Um, a really quick one, where you can leverage mutual connections, you know, sometimes getting someone else that the influencer knows to introduce you can speed things up. Um, I, I find that really works a lot. And you know, using something like LinkedIn, which allows you to do that, can be one way to do that. But um, and I, I personally would try and do it in another way because LinkedIn, um, a lot of people are introducing people on LinkedIn that they don't really know. So if there's a mutual connection, um, leverage that in some way if you can. One of the last things I want to say is to um, really... Um, Focus upon building these kind of relationships before you need something. Um, This is kind of the last thing I'll say is I get a lot of first contacts from people that come with an ask. And whilst I certainly am open to responding and um, you know working with people that I've never heard of before, the reality is I'm much more likely to want to connect with someone and help someone that I feel like I've had an ongoing connection with. And I'm much more open to people asking me to do things or asking me for a favor or asking me to participate in what they're doing if if that relationship didn't start with that. Start these relationships with an open-ended attitude. Um, I really love what Sonia Simone over at Copy Blogger writes on this particular topic. She actually has a really great article that I'll link to in the show notes today with 10 tips for connecting with influencers. And some of it's got some overlap with what I've uh, said today, but she actually gives you some tactical advice as well that I haven't covered. But the last thing she says I want to read it to you, and I hope Simone doesn't mind. She, she, her last point is, it doesn't always work the way you thought it would. And this is what she writes. She says, way back when I started my first blog, I secretly imagined that one day I was going to have tea and crumpets with Seth Godden every day. Turns out I can't really eat crumpets. All that gluten is not good for me. Also, possibly more to the point, Seth just wasn't that interested. To be clear, he's always been very nice, just not on the daily crumpets kind of level nice. On my path, one of my goals was to someday develop a good relationship, working relationship with Seth Godden. Things didn't work out exactly as I'd visualized, but a bunch of other good things happened on that path. And I did end up building great working relationships with lots of other amazing people. You have to follow the path you're actually on, which sometimes bears only slight resemblance to the one that was originally in your head. The plan is nothing. Planning is everything, Dwight Eisenhower once said. Do have goals. Do have some folks in mind that you'd love to create professional relationships with. And then do a bunch of epic stuff. Be a good egg. Know your topic and make yourself useful and see where the real path leads. 
it's going to be somewhere good. Just be ready for a few interesting twists. And I think this is so important. And it really comes back to, I guess, what I said at the the top. Um, Many times you will try and get to know someone. You'll reach out to an influencer. Sometimes they won't reply. Sometimes it will um, lead to nothing at all. But sometimes it will lead to something that you didn't expect. And many of the, the times that I've approached people, I've approached with one thing in mind and something else has come out of that interaction as well. It may be that that person is a stepping stone to meeting someone else. It may be that what you pitch that person, ask that person, they say no to, but they have another idea that could end up being a fruitful collaboration in some way. So So build the relationships first. Actually reach out to people and who knows where these things will lead to. This is ProBlogger. Now, the last thing I want to do with this episode is to finish off with some words that my anonymous influencer friend wrote down for me to share. It's his list of five things to do and five things not to do. This is what he writes. He says, don't be a robot. Don't give false flattery. Don't be negative or a gossip. Don't be a fanboy or fangirl. Don't be selfish. And then his do's, he says, be generous, be constructive, be confident, be engaging, and be human. I hope something in what I've shared today is helpful to you. Um, Reach out to influencers, you never know where these things may lead to. You can find today's show notes with that link to Sonia Simone's amazing article over on Copyblogger. Uh, the show notes are at problogger.com forward slash podcast forward slash 203. The last thing I say is, and I hinted at this at the top of the show, is that we've made some changes in our ProBlogger Facebook group over the last week. Um, This is, uh, the group is now growing. It's almost up to 8,000 members. And as things grow, we need to adapt and evolve and change things up. So a few things that we've done. Firstly, we have changed it from being a public group to a closed group. It's not secret. Um, You can find it if you do a search for ProBlogger community. But now, uh, if you look at it and you're not a member, you can't see what's going on inside, which makes it a little bit more private. A few people were reporting that um, threads were showing up in their friends' feeds and things like that. Now that won't happen. So if you want to ask questions and you don't want um, your readers or other people to see it, um, only people in the community are going to see that. We've also started using hashtags in our group a lot more. And we have asked people to only start new threads that start with one of two hashtags, either ask, hashtag ask, and in that case, you are asking a question, or hashtag tip, where you are leaving a tip. We really want the group to be a place where people help one another. So they're asking questions, talking about the problems that they have, and sharing tips that they've got as well. We also ask people not to share links in the group as well. Um, And we've all been part of Facebook groups where just the link sharing goes on and on. It becomes a very self-promotional place. We've asked people to actually share the advice that they've got in the thread itself with a tip rather than sharing a link to something that they've written elsewhere. And that certainly helped to cut down the amount of threads that we've got, but also made the threads we've got more useful. And the last thing we've been doing in the Facebook group is regular threads. So every Monday, we're now doing goals. What's your goal of the week? Um, thread and I start that or Lainey who works with me starts that off and then uh, everyone responds to that. That's Mondays. uh, Wednesdays is hump day hurdles. So what is the biggest challenge you've got this week? What's the problem that you've got this week? So it's about sharing those problems, but then we encourage people to um, be the solution to the problems that each other has. And so you share your problem, then you look through the list and find someone else that has a problem that you can be a solution for. So that's on Wednesdays. And then uh, Fridays is Win Day. And that's a day where we share, um, we invite you to share something that you've done during the week uh, that has been a win. And that is an opportunity for you to point out a post that you've written or um, uh, to link to something that you have um, feel proud about. So we are allowing you to share your links, those types of things, but only in those type of threads as well. 
Uh, we've had some really positive responses to what we're doing in the group. I get a lot of personal messages from people saying, thank you, this group has helped me to level up in my blogging. So if you are looking for a community that's supportive, that's really positive, very constructive, do join the Facebook group. Go to problogger.com forward slash group and you'll be forwarded into the Facebook group. Uh, or you'll find a link to that on our show notes um, or if you do a search on Facebook as well. Thanks so much for listening to this podcast. I'm amazed every week when I look at the stats and the amount of people who are engaging and listening um, and uh, sharing the journey with us in in this way. It's a real honor to be a part of that. And I look forward to connecting with you, maybe at one of our events in the coming weeks um, or in our Facebook group as well. The last thing I'll say is that over the next couple of weeks, I will be at our Australian events as this podcast goes out. So we've got a bit of a special treat for you for the next two episodes of the podcast as well be a bit different to normal so i hope you enjoy what we've got planned for you while i'm off at the pro blogger events we're going to give you a taste of what goes on at our events in this podcast thanks for listening and i'll chat with you next week in one of those episodes episode 204 you've been listening to pro blogger if you'd like to comment on any of today's topics or subscribe to the series find us at problogger.com forward slash podcast Tweet us at ProBlogger. Find us at facebook.com forward slash ProBlogger or search ProBlogger on iTunes. This episode of the ProBlogger podcast was edited by the team at Podcast Motor, who offer a great range of services, including helping you to set up and launch your podcast, as well as ongoing editing and production of the podcast that you produce. You can check them out at podcastmotor.com.